Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. It uh, feels really good to be back. I sincerely apologize for the lack of uploads in March. Uh, the reason for that will become apparent in April, but I can tell you what was essentially going on. So I've been working on two series in parallel. Uh, the web app pen testing series is still ongoing, so apologies for not uploading on that front. I did record pretty much the, the next five or 10 videos within that series, but I had to also complete another series that was time sensitive that will be released at the end of April. So the original plan was to complete the web app pen testing series in March, and then I would have the other series completed by the end of April. Uh, but the way this is going to work now is I'll complete the web app pen testing series during the course of April, and then I'll be releasing the other series, which uh, will become apparent then at the end of April. So again, apologies for that, guys. Uh, thank you for all of those who reached out to me and you know if they're asking they're essentially asking me whether things was okay everything's okay just really busy uh, as a lot of you were so i apologize for that once again with that being said uh, in this video i'm going to be showing you how to roll your own pen testing distribution or how to set up your own pen testing distribution so the objective here is i'm going to show you how to install all your favorite pen testing tools on any distribution you you like or prefer however that's not really true i'm going to be showing you how to install all the tools you require for pen tests and uh, also for anything else uh, you know pertinent to the defensive side of cybersecurity on uh, debian based distributions or on an arch and on an arch based distribution or you know just vanilla arch uh, so why am i making this video well the reason I'm making it is because it actually makes sense now. I wanted to make this video a couple of years ago, but it wouldn't have seemed, uh, you know, useful at that time, primarily because, uh, you know, for beginners and students, uh, you typically prefer using a, um, a distribution like Kali or Parrot because, you know, everything's installed and you don't need that. But a lot of you are actually, you know, moving forward in your career and you realize that uh, the use of your own distribution or your own VPS uh, server running in the cloud is very very important and you'd like to you know install and manage the tools uh with that being said you can also run kali on aws that's not an issue but mo for most of you you have already identified a distribution that you like you just like to install the tools you need and move on with your life and you know perform your assessments or engagement so that's what this video is going to be about now to accomplish this i'm going to be utilizing uh one framework or uh, really two frameworks if i can call them that one of them is the pen tester framework here. So I'll be showing you how to use this to install tools on Debian based distributions, uh, you know, just vanilla distributions without anything installed. I'll walk you through a few things that I do to get it ready for an, an external engagement, because I do know that uh, using a VPS to connect to an internal network can be quite tricky unless you're utilizing a VPN. So uh, this is my typical setup. Without, with, with that being said, uh, you can also, you know, perform the same techniques here or utilize the same tools and frameworks on your own uh, distribution, whether you're running it in a VM or in a, uh, or you've installed it on bare metal. Uh, the only reason why I'm doing it on a VPS is to walk you through my, my actual methodology and workflow. Uh, furthermore, or in addition to that, a VPS provides me with faster internet so I can actually install the tools much quicker. So uh, I'll be walking you through different techniques on how to get the tools installed. So I'm going to be using Linode for my VPS as that's what I typically use now. They actually support the channel for a couple of series, which I'm really, really excited about, but I think I've said too much already. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to get started with Linode, we have a link in the description section that'll give you $100 in free Linode credit that you can actually follow along. However, if you don't, that's perfectly fine. So I'll uh, be creating two Linodes here. One of them is going to be a Debian based distribution and the other one is going to be Arch. That's right. Linode actually supports uh, or provides you with uh, the ability to launch a uh, or to you know set up a server that is running Arch Linux. So I'm going to use Ubuntu 20.04 as that's typically what I use. That's LTS and the region I can use whatever I want. So let's say London. And then the cool thing with the actual Linode plans is you can customize, uh, you know, your actual resources based on what you require. So if you're doing password cracking, you can push that up to, you know, whatever you want here. So, and of course that's going to cost a premium, but if you're running it for a couple of hours, maybe then you can see that it's about $6 an hour, which can be, an, you know, quite efficient. Uh, and then of course you have your GPU option. Now in, in my particular case here, it's not allowing me to select that, but if I change my region, I'll be able to 
uh, essentially get a Linode server with dedicated uh, dedicated graphics card for password cracking. Uh, and uh, of course, for those of you who are actually looking for GPUs in the market right now, you know that the prices are insane. So this actually makes sense. Um, in my case, I'll just go for the lowest one here because I'm not really going to be doing anything with it. That's just one gig of RAM, one CPU. And it's, I, of course, this is Ubuntu server. So I'm not pushing a graphical user interface. I'm just going to be working via SSH, which is what I typically do. So I'll just call this Ubuntu uh, and, uh, you know, I'll provide the root password here. There we are. I can also add an SSH key, which I typically do, but you know, setting that up is fairly simple. I'll click on create and I'll give that a couple of seconds to actually provision. And once that is done, I will log in via SSH to the server. So it's going to take a couple of seconds to provision and we'll take a look at how to install pen testing tools on a Debian based distribution, in this case, Ubuntu, and then we'll move on to Arch. So in the case of Ubuntu, we're going to be utilizing the Pentester framework, which I have covered before, but I'm going to be covering extensively in this video. So the Pentester's framework is, is essentially a Python script that's designed for Ubuntu, uh, Debian, Ubuntu, or Arch-based distributions to create a similar and familiar distribution for pen testing. As pen testers, we've been accustomed to the pen test directories or uh, our own tool set that we want to keep up to date all the time. We have those go-to tools that we use on a regular basis and using the latest uh, and greatest is important. So uh, PTF, that's the acronym for the Pentester framework, attempts to install all your pen testing tools, the latest and the greatest, compile them, build them, and make it so that you can install or update your distribution on any machine. So everything is organized in a, a fashion that is cohesive to the penetration testing execution standard, also known as PTES. So they're sorted based on the various phases within the PTES methodology. So you have information gathering, uh, enumeration, uh, that really falls under info gathering. And then uh, you have exploitation, post-exploitation, privilege escalation. That's how the tools are sorted. And the way this works is it actually works quite similar to the Metasploit framework, whereby you'll be provided with a console and you can then search for modules or search for tools. Uh, use the those particular tools, which are essentially sorted in the form of modules and then install them. And it'll essentially install it if it's available within the Ubuntu uh, repositories. If not, which is likely the case, it's then going to uh, clone the repositories uh, and compile the tools for you. So this goes through the actual compilation. Um, so it looks like that should be set up. So I'm just going to log into the server here. So SSH and I'll log in as root. You can also, you know, create another user. It's uh, not recommended to just have root access lying around there. Uh, but, you know, I typically use uh, VPS for maybe a couple of days at most. So you can see that we're running Ubuntu here. So the first thing I like doing is uh, making sure that I have the latest repos or I update my repos and I can then apt uh, get upgrade to make sure I have the latest packages. And I can also say sudo uh, in this case, I don't need sudo, so sudo or apt-get install. And then the tools I typically use are vim, wget, curl. These are within the Ubuntu repo, so htop, um, and then of course gcc, uh, build essential. Uh, what else do I need? Uh, yeah, Python 3 pip, because uh, there are quite a few Python uh, tools that I use. Let me just correct this here. Another typo, so... And uh, what else do I need? I think that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, probably proxy chains and the Tor service in certain cases. So I'll get all of that installed. Uh, and I then need to uh, modify my Vim RC file uh, just a little bit because I typically like having syntax highlighting on and, uh, you know, the actual uh, line numbers set up for me. So uh, let's see. Ooh, I made a mistake here. So apt get. Uh, yeah. I uh, always make that mistake here. So always a syntax error somewhere. So hopefully that will get everything installed now. There we go. So that's uh, running the upgrade. And I'm just going to wait for this to complete. Yeah, so this is why I actually opted to use a VPS because the internet is much faster. Plus, uh, you know, I don't have to go through that tedious process now. Whenever I'm setting up a VPS uh, for uh, for pen testing, I typically have a bash script that will, uh, you know, essentially install all of these utilities first. I then have another script, a Python script that sort of integrates with the pen tester framework 
to essentially install the tools that I require based on the type of engagement that I'm performing, which again, I'll be covering in future videos. I'll probably release it to the public because there's a lot of projects that I've developed internally for our own assessments. And, uh, you know, I'll be releasing them to the public this year. So one of that is going to be our own distribution uh, again. So uh, do stay tuned for that. As I said, it's not going to be a competitor uh, to Parrot or Kali. It's just what we use. And it's uh, very minimal, uh, very fast, because we actually use a custom kernel. And, uh, you know, we've also tested it in VMs and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but it's uh, really designed to be as effective as possible. So no issues with tools, as we've uh, essentially got a catalog of tools that we use and we make sure that we maintain them ourselves. So if a new version of a tool is released and it has an issue before we actually incorporate it into the distribution, we make sure that we test it and then we incorporate it. So we're very careful about that, which I think is very important, uh, you know, with regards to pen testing tools. So uh, that's a, quite a mouthful. This is taking quite a while. I should have probably said this uh, at uh, probably two CPUs and two gigs of RAM. Uh, so I'm just going to wait for this to complete. All right, so once that is done, I can just uh, make or customize my VimRC file. So Vim, VimRC, and then, you know, set number, syntax on, and uh, write and quit. All right, so that's the first set of tools I like installing. I'll now navigate to my OPT directory, and we can head over to the pen tester framework. So Firstly, we'll need to install the requirements because uh, with pip3 because uh, this is developed in Python and, uh, you know, under modules, this is where pretty much all of the tools are added. By the way, you can also submit a tool here that doesn't exist. And uh, you can see that they're sorted based on the pen testing uh, execution standard. So, you know, uh, you can click on, for example, AV bypass, exploitation, intelligence gathering, so on and so forth. So. I'll just clone this repo here into my OPT directory. So git uh, clone, and there we are. And we'll head over into the PTF directory. So we'll, I'll say pip uh, install r requirements.txt. So that'll get all the requirements or dependencies installed. There we are. And we can then launch the PTF binary. There we go. So It'll launch up here, and as I said, this is uh, it actually, it's actually a framework, so you'll be provided with a similar interface to the Metasploit framework uh, console. So you can type in the question mark to essentially list out a series of commands. So you can show modules, show a specific module, search for a module, use a module, and then show the options, set an option, uh, install a particular tool or a module in this context. You can also update it or upgrade it, which is really, really helpful. So uh, you can show modules, which I'll just type in here. This will display all the modules and their names. So this is how you typically load them. Just like a Metasploit module, you'd essentially copy it and say use. And then once it's selected, you just type in install or set the options, which are very important. So the best way here is to just search for the tool that you're interested in. So, you know, I typically would search for a tool like Nmap, which already exists, I think, within the Ubuntu repositories. But, you know, I can say search Nmap. And in this case, there it is. You can also install all the other, you know, all the other tools here. So I'll just say use, and then I can type in show options. And uh, you can specify uh, where you want it to be installed. And in this case, it's uh, going to install it under the root of the Linux file system in a directory called Pentest, and then vulnerability analysis. Now, for specific tools, it'll actually create a... Um, let me just show you how this works. So I'll just say install because there's a few things that I want to highlight when using the pen tester framework. So you can see that it's using the Ubuntu repository. So it automatically detects what distribution you're on. As I said, this can also be used on Arch. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but uh, what it does, it'll actually symbolically link the binary so that you can execute it from anywhere or, you know, creates a shortcut for those of you who use Windows, which I do. But uh, you know, once that is done, I can essentially exit and then try and use the tool and it'll, it will actually work. So let me just show you that here. So exit, nmap, that's working fine. That's not an issue. That's not what we're focused on in this video. So let me show you another tool like maybe GoBuster, right? Which, uh, you know, can be quite difficult to install manually or quite time consuming, I should say, not really difficult. So, you know, I can just uh, type in install then. And... Um, 
It's going to get all the dependencies like Golang, for example, if it's not installed, it's going to sort all of that out. Uh, and in this case, it shouldn't take too much time at all, apart from the actual unpacking process, which, you know, as I said, will be much faster on a system with uh, more resources allocated to it. But on a VPS, I typically go for, you know, one gig of RAM or two gigs of RAM based on what I require. And I also forgot to install uh, OpenVPN. So uh, in this case, it looks like uh, it is done. Uh, the only way to test it is, let's see, exit. And if I say go buster, doesn't look like it's added that shortcut there. Um, hmm, it actually looks like that package exists. So if I go into the pen test directory, you can see under intelligence gathering, uh, we should have go buster. So there we are, go buster. And uh, it looks like that should be installed, but uh, we can also install that with, uh, with the aptitude package manager, which is not what I wanted to go over right now. So I'm just going to go back into the OPT directory and, uh, you know, ETF and let me just launch that here. So typically tools like SMB map, for example, you know, I can just say use and then uh, copy that name there and, um, you know, install. And that should actually work because I know that uh, we have actually used this particular module recently within our own environment. So SMB map is a Python script or tool. So it's going to take a couple of seconds to get all the dependencies set up. So in this case, the actual Python modules. So I'm just going to let this complete, after which uh, we'll actually test it and see whether it launches. All right, so uh, as you can see, it's going to create an automatic uh, launcher. So you can launch the tool anywhere from uh, by typing in SMB map. That's only in specific cases. Now, one thing that I would like to point out is you saw with GoBuster, we had a little bit of an issue there. And that was with dependencies, primarily because it's going to build the tool or compile it uh, because it's, you know, this is manually. So, you know, you're not using any repos from Kali or anything like that. Uh, but this actually worked. So I'm just going to say exit and SMB map. Uh, uh, sorry, that's SMB map. There we go. That should work. There we are. OK, so that's one example. Let me just take you through a couple of examples. So. Uh, what are the tools we typically utilize or need? Um, let's see if I can think of any here. So probably Nikto. Uh, there it is. Uh, we can search for another one, like something like WordPress scan. Uh, there we are. That's uh, always useful in certain cases. So, you know, use, put that in there, install. And I'm going to let this install because this is going to take a while. Or in this case, it doesn't look like it's taking too much time at all. All right, so that is installed. I can now exit and I'll just exit here. WordPress scan. Uh, that should work without issues. Huh, same same problem, but don't worry. Uh, by the way, I should actually get uh, installed Tmux here because this is getting quite uh, annoying switching over. So Tmux and I'll just, uh, um, let's see, I don't want to move the window here. So control B and uh, I'll just rename this to PTF. And then control BC. Let me just go back to the PTF window here. All right. So I'll get to those issues in a second and now you can resolve them. So PTF um, and I can search for a couple of more tools and then I'll walk you through how to use the Kali repos for Debian based distributions. So I can search for a particular tool. Uh, let's say if this is really getting annoying. We can actually just say show modules here and let's use one because I can't for the life of me think of one that uh, that I use, uh, so probably one like sublister uh, or subfinder, but I don't want to use a Python tool uh, for this in this particular case. So, you know, probably a tool like 161, which I saw there. Um, let's see, let's see, enum for Linux. Yeah, we can try that out. Fierce is also quite useful. So let's try DNS recon. So search DNS recon, uh, which I already believe exists within the repos. So let's try another one here. Um, Let's see. Uh, we can try one like uh, Amass. Um, that's uh, quite a large one. I don't want to waste any more time on this, but uh, you get the idea. You can install tools like that. So search uh, enum for Linux. There we are. And let's try this as an example, which is also quite useful. So use and then install. So it'll go through and install the prerequisites first. And, uh, you know, this is also a Python tool, but uh, this should work because I haven't had any issues with this particular module. 
uh, during my engagements. So gonna let that complete here. Okay, so once it tells you that an automatic launcher has been set up, then you know we can head over into this here and say enum for Linux. There we are. So that works out. So part of the issue here that you're seeing is firstly the actual modules, uh, the actual module structure. So this framework utilizes modules just like the Metasploit framework. Now, because pen testing or you know offensive security tools are constantly changing, that means that these modules also have to be modified. So, you know, if I, um, let me just go into intelligence gathering here and I search for the GoBuster module. So GoBuster, which, you know, I can probably update, which I think we have in our case. So, you know, GoBuster, there it is there. And uh, you can see this is how you structure modules, right? So, um, you know, it's a Python script, the author of the module, this will install or update uh, GoBuster. And then uh, you, you can see that the install type is Git, the repository location is specified there, install location is uh, under GoBuster, the de dependencies required is Git and Golang. Uh, and then after the commands are done, uh, CD, go to the install location, go get and go build, and then create a launcher for GoBuster. So, you know, if we were to take a look at PTF again, so I can go back and, you know, um, search for GoBuster because that actually failed to install. So GoBuster and, uh, you know, I just want to walk through that one more time just to identify the issue. So, and then I type in install here. Which I think the issue is with uh, the go get command. I could be long, I could be wrong. So you can see the module requires go 1.16. So, if we take a look at um, where did I want to navigate to here? So if we actually go back into this particular one here and head over into the pen test directory and under intelligence gathering under go buster, sorry, uh, CD go buster, uh, my keyboard, uh, sorry, CD go buster. And um, you typically navigate to the directory and the, the issue, as I said, is you know, the actual go get command. So it actually requires an updated version of go, which we can do manually, but the module needs to be updated, right? So ideally, in a situation like this, I would need to install the required version of go. And, uh, you know, that's because it's this has not been updated. So I need to install the required version, and then, you know, run this module again, and that would essentially install it or compile it for me, right? So as I said, this uh, because of this framework structure and because of the fact that no one use, uses it actively, the modules aren't being uh, updated and stuff like that. Uh, so you know, all you know, compiling from source is always going to be an issue, especially when you're util utilizing an automate an, an automation framework like the pen tester framework. With that being said, it's not all bad. As I said, uh, you can always clone the repo or fork it and work or and update the modules based on your own requirements, and then uh, you know actually contribute back to the original project, uh, you know, if you've made it better, which is what we had done and what we're going to do moving forward. So that's the first technique. Now, the best technique that I recommend for if you're getting started is to actually utilize the Kali repos if you're working on a Debian based distribution. So I'll head over into the Kali network repositories. It's really very simple to use. All you need to do is just, uh, you know, put this within your sources and then update your repo. So we'll do that right now. So it's Vim, Etsy, APT. Uh, this is again for Debian based distributions, sources.list. At the bottom here, uh, I'm just going to, uh, you know, add a new line and I can just add a comment. So I can say Kali repos and you can always uncomment it when you're done. But uh, this will essentially go over that process of, you know, compiling everything, dependencies, etc. Uh, you then need to say sudo apt get update. Now you will get an error here, which I'll go over in a second. So the signatures couldn't be verified because the public key is not available. Now there's an easy workaround uh, for this. You essentially need to add the key, um, this particular public key, which I'll actually show you how to do right now. So because this is a GPG key, um we can essentially add it so you know i can say gpg server first so we can specify a key server here and in this case the key server can be uh you know for example ubuntu it's key server dot ubuntu dot com and then specify the receive key so 
uh we can say receive uh, key is going to be this one right over here so copy that there paste it in there hit enter okay so that's imported so we can now say uh we can check the fingerprint or we can export it so gpg and then we specify a and then uh export specify the actual key itself so there we are and uh, you know just pipe that to apt and uh, apt key sorry and then specify add that's going to add it for you we can then say sudo apt get update and uh, the Kali repos should now be active there we are and uh, now for example i can you want to make sure that you never run an upgrade with these repos i'm just telling you that right now so once you're done installing the tools just disable that uh, particular re repository and uh, then update uh, your repositories and then you can perform whatever upgrades you want so uh, I'll just show you why this is better if you don't want to go through the through the entire you know process of getting tools installed manually which is still viable but you know it, it's uh, going to be time consuming so there we are so I can now say sudo apt get install uh, a, you know I can install a tool like gobuster here and uh, there we are that's from Kali and this should work right out of the box and uh, yeah so it's setting it up and uh, once that's done we will be able to use it without any issues and you can do that for you can pretty much install all the tools within the Kali repos and uh, you know Kali also provides you with the ability to essentially install a set or collection of tools so i'll just type in gobuster you can see that's working without any issues so you can say sudo apt get install or in this case i can just say search uh apt search kali uh let's use a wildcard there um let's let's uh, sorry i'm actually using tmux here so control b and uh, we should uh, there we are so you can install tools based on categories so fuzzing tools forensics tools exploitation tools or you can install the core uh, the core tools uh, and in this case i know that there's the ability to install the light version of kali so let's see this here so defaults no uh, i believe it was actually active so you could install a set of tools based on uh, the actual category uh, i think i actually saw it there uh, there we are so tools top 10 so that'll install the kali linux top 10 tools i don't know what they are but you can do that as well so pretty much whatever tool that uh, you know whatever tool exists within the kali uh repositories can be installed so you know if i wanted to install uh sudo apt get install metasploit framework i can install it as well so fairly simple to do on Debian. I did not cover how to use Catulin because it's pretty much outdated now, but it essentially automates this process of adding the repos, but they haven't added that uh, initial step or that step that involved, uh, you know, adding the GPG key for verification, for signature verification, which, you know, you can actually do it from, uh, from this particular video. So now that that is done, and we've taken a look at how to install tools on, um, on a uh, Debian-based distribution, we can actually take a look at how, how to do this on an Arch-based distribution. So I'm just going to exit here, and uh, we'll just kill that session there, and I'm going to terminate that particular VPS, and we'll create a new Arch Linux uh, VPS here. All right, so I'm just going to select Arch Linux here, and uh, let's see if I can actually find it. Always eludes me. There we are. So there's Arch and uh, the region will just go for london as that is closest to me so i'll just uh, select london there and i can then specify the same uh linode plan and i can then provide it with a an appropriate name here so let me just rename that so i'll just call this arch and i'll provide the password here for ssh access and we're pretty much uh, good to go on that front so i'll just create the linode uh, there and I'll just wait for it to be provisioned, and then we can actually get started with this. And uh, I'll be walking you through the best technique, really, when it comes down to installing tools on Arch. And it's uh, really much simpler when working with an Arch-based distribution, obviously, but you'll actually see that. All right, so I've uh, logged in to the Arch Linux server here, and this is running vanilla Arch, uh, which is great. And uh, let's take a look at the actual utility or resource we're going to be using and that of course is the black arch 
repos or repositories. So if you head over to the Black Arch website and uh, you take a look at the downloads page under install on top of Arch, uh, you can see that they have a bootstrap script here that uh, will actually uh, explore it and you know go over what that script is going to do. But it essentially adds the repos and uh, essentially make sure that everything is verified. Once that is done, as you can see here, you can pretty much uh, display the list of available tools and then install them quite simply or install them based on their category, which, you know, I really like. Um, so uh, what we'll do here is we'll just copy the first command there. But before we do that, I just want to make sure that everything is uh, synchronized. So sudo pacman, um, sudo pacman, syy, don't want to upgrade anything right now. You can probably also get the other tools installed. So sudo pacman s uh, vim curl uh, htop. Uh, what else do we need uh, here? We pretty much need. Uh, I think we I think Arch will pretty much have everything else that we will require. Uh, but we can probably install OpenVPN. That's one thing I forgot to install previously. So there we are. Make sure that all of that is installed. And we can now uh, essentially paste in the script there to get the, the actual script. So I'll just open this up with Vim, so strap.sh. And uh, you can see this will install and set up the Black Arch keyring. So that's step one. So it'll fetch the actual, uh, so that's the mirror file to fetch and write. So Black Arch mirror list. And then uh, this, this is just a simple error message wrapper. Then there's an echo wrapper here and it'll then check for your privileges so you need root privileges it's then going to create a temporary directory it's going to check for an internet connection and then it's going to fetch the key ring verify the key ring signature so there we are it essentially did what we did um you know when we were setting up the kali repos on or the kali repo on ubuntu once that is done it's going to delete the signature there and then initialize so make sure etsy pat pacman.d gnu gp uh, gnu pg is usable and uh, it's then going to ask for the mirror based on your location so the best mirror there and then once that is done we should be good to go so uh we're not going to make any changes so i'll just exit and uh, you know chmod plus x if i can type that incorrectly so strap.sh and uh, we can then say execute that so that's going to take a couple of seconds to get everything set up based on your internet connection. Uh, once that is set up, you can pretty much install whatever tools you want that are within the black, the actual Black Arch repositories. As I said, the pen tester framework also works on Arch. So if there's not a tool within the Black Arch repos, which I doubt there is or isn't, uh, then uh, you know you can use that as a uh, alternative. So sudo pacman. Let's just synchronize everything one more time, and you should see the Black Arch repos there. So to install the tool sudo pacman s. Uh, we can install a tool like, uh, for example, enum for Linux. I'm just using that as an example. Crack uh, map exec. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? I'll also show you how to install the Metasploit framework because that's an issue people have with um, with Arch Linux is getting it to work. Not really getting it to work, but uh, setting up the PostgreSQL database server so that you can actually utilize the database or the Metasploit framework database, which is very important during engagements, as you can obviously uh, tell because it allows you to you know save everything that you uh, you do with the Metasploit framework and as well as save all the loot that you or the credentials that you get from systems that you have uh, gained access to uh, among amongst other things. So uh, let's see if this works here. So this uh, at least in my experience this is much better. So enum for Linux. There we are. Uh, crack map uh exec that works out of the box oh it doesn't actually so it looks like there's an issue with the python module always an issue with python scripts uh but that's fine i guess uh we can probably install that manually which is why i like uh maintaining my own packages uh because of all of these updates uh but uh, what other tool did we install here that's pretty much it so let me walk you through how to install metasploit right so we'll say the name of the package in the black arch repos is Metasploit, and then we'll also install PostgreSQL. Uh, yeah, that should be it. So I'll actually walk you through this process as well, because uh, I know that a lot of you will point that out to me. What's the use of setting up your own pen testing distribution if you can't install Metasploit uh, and probably, you know, other 
other important frameworks like C2 frameworks and stuff like that. So once that is done, you can see I can launch up MSF console without any issue. The issue is going to be the PostgreSQL database. So there we are. So it's going to start it and, you know, I can search for exploits or whatever I'm looking for. So there we are. So I can search uh, blue keep, for example. There we are. So, you know, you get the idea that works out. But if I say DB status, and that is DB underscore status, you can see there's PostgreSQL is selected, but there's no connection. So I'll, I'll walk you through this process. Now, you typically, if you were, you know, on Kali, you'd say MSF DB, and uh, you'd then say uh, initialize, right, for a fresh installation. But there's an issue here. If we say netstat uh, antp to view the act uh, the active, uh, you know, the actual ports here that are open, you can see we don't have 5432, which is the PostgreSQL database server port. So that means that the actual PostgreSQL service is not running. So we can say sudo systemctl start uh, PostgreSQL. Let's see. Okay, so there's an issue there. Why is there an issue? You'll see in a couple of seconds. So the first thing we would need to do is switch to the PostgreSQL service account, which is used for all of these configurations. So sudo su, and uh, we can then specify uh, Postgres, I believe is uh, it is what it's called. So Postgres, hit enter. And then if we say sudo systemctl uh, status uh, PostgreSQL, uh, do we have any privileges here? No, we actually need to go through a few configurations. So the first thing we need to do is uh, init DB. Um, and then we need to set up the actual locale. So locale English um, uh, US dot, in this case, uh, UTF. And that is going to be, uh, sorry, English US UTF 8. And the directory is var lib and we want to have that in postgres data uh, yeah that should be good okay so now that that is done what we would need to do then is essentially log in uh, once we logged in we need to start the service and then log in once we logged in we can create the database for metasploit uh, we can create the user assign privileges and then we can go ahead and create the uh, database.yaml configuration file for the Metasploit framework so that it can actually connect to the database. So I'm just going to switch back to the root user. And uh, now if I say sudo systemctl start postgresql, uh, you can see that that works now. And if I say status, uh, just trying to see whether there's a, okay, so it's active and loaded. Um, you can also enable it on system startup so that you don't have issues with this as you move forward. So we can just switch back to the actual um, Postgres user. So uh, sudo su and uh, Postgres. There we are. And once this is done, we can then uh, utilize uh, PSQL to essentially uh, set a password. So uh, we're just going to say PSQL and the command in this case is going to be alter so we're we're passing in a query so alter user postgres because uh, we'll need to log in and it's always recommended to add a password or to change a password so with password and then in sing yeah we, we can put this in single quote so i'll just use password one two three please don't do this in uh, in a real scenario i'm just doing this for demonstration so that i can actually remember it so we hit enter so the uh, role is altered uh once that is done we can actually log in so we can say psql uh, so there we are, PostgreSQL. So the first thing is to create a database. Um, and in this case, we'll just use the default. So create database MSF. Once that is done, if I list uh, databases, the, the actual databases here, you can see we have the Metasploit Framework database there. Uh, we then need to create a user. So I'm going to say create a user. And in this case, we'll just call it MSF user. This is for the actual authentication. We'll be specifying all of these options within the uh, database.yaml configuration file. So uh, we'll say create user MSF user uh, with an encrypted uh, password. In this case, we'll say the password is going to be, um, and in this case, we'll just call it MSF admin. Again, I'm using simple passwords so that I can remember this when we're creating the YAML file. So that looks fine. 
I'll hit enter. We then need to grant the privileges. So I'm going to say grant uh, all uh, privileges and uh, on the specific database. So on database MSF to the user, MSF add, uh, sorry, MSF user, not the password. So MSF user, that is done. Okay, so now that that is done, we can actually exit right and don't worry if it tells you you could not save the history file that's perfectly fine in this particular case so uh, if we switch over to the root user account and uh, you know we create the actual i'll navigate to the home directory of the root user we'll need to create an ms4 directory which is the default folder that's used for a local configuration of you know modules the actual configuration for the metasploit framework don't ask me why it's still called MS4, you know, with the latest version being MS5 point something or MS6. Uh, it is actually MS6, so CD uh, MS4. Within this, we want to create the database.yaml file, so YML, not, yeah, yeah, there we are. And within this file, we need we would need to specify the configuration for Metasploit, uh, that Metasploit will use to connect to the database. So let's actually do that now. So in this case, the the actual the, the actual connection of this particular setup is production. So uh, production, and uh, we can then specify under this the various options. So we can say the adapter in this case is PostgreSQL. So PostgreSQL, uh, and then under that we would need to specify the um, the actual database name, the name of the database that we created, which is MSF, and we would then need to specify the username, which was MSF user, and uh, we would then need to specify the password, which I did, so MSF admin. Um, let me just make sure that is indented correctly. So adapter database, username, password, and then the host, which is very important, our local host. Um, what else did we need to do? We um, believe we need to specify the port which is 5432, unless you've configured it on a different port, which you can, in that case, customize it. We'll need to set the pool to 5, uh, and uh, we can then set the actual timeout. You can change that based on your own requirements. You can keep that to 10 seconds if we want, or in this case, let's just have it at uh, 5. Right and quit. And if I now say uh, sudo system, uh, system CTL restart post, uh, PostgreSQL, I'll restate the PostgreSQL database server. And if we now say net stat uh, ANTP, you can see that 5432 is now open. So we can say MSF console. And if we now say DB status, it'll still say that it's not connected, but um, I'll actually show you how to connect with the credentials you specified. So it, this is all going to be coming from the YAML file that we just configured. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. let's see, is this an actual banner? Yeah, this is a banner. I thought there was something wrong. So DB status, no connection. So DB connect, we can say um, MSF user at MSF. So the user and the name of the database, hit enter. That's going to take, all right, so it's actually done. So DB status, and there we are. So uh, that's how to configure or how to install the Metasploit framework, uh, install the PostgreSQL database server, configure it, and how to connect it to the Metasploit framework for use. So yeah, that's how to get it set up on Arch. Uh, it uh, takes a while, but uh, once you have this all you know laid out, it's uh, quite easy to do. And of course, you can write a couple of scripts to do this for you. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, as I said, we can utilize Pacman now to install uh, whatever tools we want. So sudo pacman s, uh, if we wanted to use exploit uh, to install exploit db for exploits, which I believe exists here. It does. But uh, does this actually work? Exploit db. So target directory usage exploit db search. So uh, not search exploit. So I can say search uh, vsftpd uh, no follow directory. So it's saying we need to use exploit control interesting uh sudo pacman s ploit uh, ctl i wonder how that works does that allow us to download the actual database locally i'm not really sure so exploit ctl hit enter so all right so it looks like uh 
doesn't give us a description. So this is created by, by Black Arch, which is really cool. So download exploit archives from the chosen sites. Can we download it from exploit DB? Uh, the directory is user share exploits. That's fine. Um, so it's not under exploit DB. So for example, let's take a look at it. We can actually download exploits in the packet storm archive. That's awesome, man. All right. But can I specify exploit DB? Uh, not really sure. Um, let's see, list available exploit archives, right? So exploit CTLF. Okay, all right. So exploit, yeah, we can essentially use the numbering there to install them from packet storm, exploit DB, M00 exploits, LSDPL exploits. Fantastic. So in this case, it actually looks like Arch is a much better solution uh, for your own uh, pen testing distribution, but yeah, that's pretty much going to be it. As I said, there's there's multiple ways you can go about doing this. Uh, do take a look at all of these tools and the resources. They will be in the description section. Uh, I'll probably create a follow-up video where I'll be showing you how to actually package your distribution uh, so that you can actually, you know, distribute it or, you know, install it on a system, so on and so forth, based on your other customizations. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you like this video or found value in it, please leave a like uh, down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, uh, let me know in the comment section. You can also reach out to me on Discord. The link to the Discord server is also in the description section. Or you can check out the Hackersploit forum, which is available on forum.hackersploit.org. Uh, With that being said, I'll be seeing you in the next video. I just want to take a couple of moments to thank our Patreons. Thank you, Michael Hubbard, Dustin Umpress, Jerry Speds, Doozy, Sid Saab, Ryan Carr, Shamir Douglas, Jojo Bibi, Balangos, Kushkev, RS, Nino Buikov, and David Bricker. You guys are really awesome. Thank you very much for supporting us. And you guys make these types of videos possible. So we really appreciate it and we look forward to producing even more high quality content.